All right, so today we are going to be going over all of my black box equipment. We have several, we have two different, technically we have four different racks here and then a cage we're gonna be going over. So we're gonna start with my XR16 and XR20 stack. So what we have here is this one here is the XR20. It's got 20 slots here. And then this is the XR16, which is 16 slots um, for my ceiling and whatnot. A 20 on top of a 20 would be a little too tall, I think. Basically how these racks are set up, they're set up with back heat that's already pre-wired or pre-built in and everything when you order from Black Box. The way they're set up, they've got back belly heat. And then, so these racks actually hold three different size tubs they all hold the vision tubs you can also use freedom breeder if you prefer those they're the same height these use the v15s v18s and v35s v15 is this style works great for small colubrids or hatchling colubrids some hatchling pythons um, you might want to go the V18 route for something like a carpet or a ball python, you know, but these are great for hatching colubrids. I've kept several hatching colubrids in these for a very long time. Well, not very, but they do grow fast. That's the one style, the smallest, the V15. And then next we have the V18, which I just showed you. This one in particular is housing one of my buckskin Okatee corn snakes. You can see these work great for little colubrid setups or again carpet pythons ball pythons whatever that may be so that is the male and female box can again both in the v18 tubs and the xr20 from black box so those were the v18 so now we can move down to the v35s and again guys just to show how versatile this rack is i have several different kinds of snakes in these up here i have corn snakes got rat snakes these house my water snakes and then these are all my pitchy rofus or not all of mine, but some of them, I have more adults here. These tubs in particular actually have the holes pre-drilled inside of them. We always add more, this isn't quite enough. But these work absolutely great for, you know, all types of, all types of stuff. Eventually I'm gonna be housing carpet pythons in these as well. I believe it has six inch back heat across the back of it. You get a little bit of a fluctuation, but that's pretty much with any, not then much though take, in comparison to other racks. No, in comparison from what I can tell, these have been the most like straight across the board. You know, I don't know if that's just from build quality or whatever, but these are much more consistent. Obviously you get, it's a little cooler like at the start of it and towards the end. That's why my Mexican pine is down here on the end because it's actually the coolest tub. But yeah, you know, these house, I mean, like I said, you know, I've got water snakes in here. I've got rat snakes, corn snakes, pituophis. I mean, it, it just, it works great. Under these stubs right here, you'll get a little tab um, and they will nick your rack as they come. And again, this comes from Vision. This isn't a black box thing, but Jen recommended that you sand that down. So if you get the V35s with your rack, make sure to do that because they will leave little nicks as I have noticed. Um, it's not too bad, but it's not anything crazy noticeable, but it's definitely there. Just leave a slight notch in it. These racks are phenomenal. And I mean, guys, just look at this. Look at this butter. Look at this. No spill water dishes. You never want to spill a water dish again. So this rack or this stack is actually also equipped with a toe kick. So this is, I think it's about four inches tall. But this essentially keeps your bottom level from getting as cold. Like if you're on carpet, it's not as big of a deal, but you also want it to be on, you don't never want your rack directly on carpet. You want it on something hard. But if you have like a concrete floor, this level will get a lot colder because you're on a concrete floor, but having this toe kick prevents it from getting as cold. Um, and again, it's not sitting directly on whatever surface your floor is so less damage to your rack as well moving over to the v70 stack so this is this is a, from right here this is a six stack and then this is a three stack this one is equipped with belly heat and this one is equipped with back heat that's just going to be a personal preference of yours i actually now that i have the belly heat i do think i prefer the belly heat to the back um, you don't have to turn it up as high to get you know a decent hot spot but the back heat does work very well for what i use um yeah these are equipped with a, this is the three stack with belly heat and again guys butter just buttery smooth guys you'll never spill a water water dish again look at this open all of them look at that just whether like it's that. the top or the bottom it doesn't matter guys like a foam there's another one this is another thorn scrub Bloop. 
Oh, here we go again. Number three. Oh, and a there's shed. a fresh shed on another female foreign scrub. This is my little foreign scrub rat group in this V70 stack. I like to give everything purchase, even though I know it's not much, but you'll be surprised how much they'll actually just lay on this stuff. And we're almost to the bottom now, and still just butter. <laughs> This is another pit you up. Is this, I, this was actually my very first uh, species of pit. Is that that little one you got? Yeah. For real? Yeah, way back wow. when. This is the first, this is my very first pit you up. I completely opus. forgot you even got that one. Yeah. Dude, that thing is freaking sweet. Yeah, he's awesome, man. Ooh. He's, um. Wow, I would never would have guessed you would have got like that black. Like, yeah, that no, dark. we got that, that dark and super orange. Yeah, no, he's just gonna be a pet one of these days. He's gonna be in a big display and looking all cool, but he's not gonna be much of a breeder. I throw random stuff in a lot of my... Oh, he's running. These glove boxes, y'all. Best hide boxes. Don't get it twisted. There's nothing in this tub, right? So there's but, no surprise, but look at this. Very bottom. Straight. If there was a water bowl in there, you wouldn't see it. You drop. wouldn't spill it. This is just. But I will say too, amazing. I'll add that the toe kicks on carpet, because I, I have a my XR20 isn't on carpet and not doesn't have a toe kick. Those two bottom tubs, because of that carpet sort of giving it that cushion, right. they are a little tighter to open than right. than they would be. So I highly recommend either a toe kick or dog. Right. But so Justin and I both have <clears> carpet. <throat> Mine are on the bottom, and there's nothing in this stuff again to look. Yeah, mine don't nothing, open that easily. Nothing. This one. Mine still are better than like my worst racks. So the way you guys see all these shim systems, so the way this works is so like I use it especially on like when I have stuff in these tubs because stuff in these are going to be extra small. So the way these shims work, so you notice they're cut. So I'll actually take two different shims. These are the skinniest side of each, and I'll cut, you know, for I'll cut a piece about probably that big and I'll actually go and tape it if we were using this I would tape it all the way back here um, so when the tub because these tubs are really long you can't just push one up front you'll still have a gap in the back a little bit so if I you tape a little piece of that you push it back and it pushes up the back you take your little front push it in there and it raises the front just enough to close it for like your really, really tiny hatchling colubrids. Yeah, because that's the gap you're you're worried about. Right, like that. Like tiny, tiny colubrids, tiny. that's a big issue for 99% yeah. of stuff you're gonna keep in those, right. probably not gonna be a big issue, no. but we're talking like tiny corns, tiny right. neurodia, stuff like and that. And like hatchling, fresh hatchlings, you know, but doing this, it just closes that gap absolutely perfectly. Every one of these has a uh, thing on it, so if you look at the gap, on there with just those two things pushing it. I mean, there's none. Yeah. It's completely closed. So these are actually, if I have it here, yeah. So that green stuff is just a big roll of this wire. So it, it works great if you're on a budget. We always recommend going through David Brahms if you can. Um, he makes the best of the best purchases. He's actually the guy for purchases with Black Box. So hit him up if you're looking for it. But if you're looking for a budget and you have a lot to fill up, this is a great option. I cut out three by three, so three triangles or triangles, rectangles. wow, three rectangles by three rectangles, and it makes a perfect perch for these. This, I'm gonna use this exact same setup for carpet pythons. I use it for baby rat snakes, small colubrids, anything that wants to get up. And every single one of these, if it has a rat snake in it, it has one of those perches for the most part. There's a lot of things you can do with tubs, guys. There's a lot of different ways to, you know, give them all types of access. You know, almost everything has a humid hide. Um, everything has a perch, everything has a warm side hide. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do things. That's one of the things we like the most about the black box racks is you have to upgrade the tubs and not the rack itself. So as the animals get bigger, you're not having to get an entire rack that just does the V35s or just does the 18s or the you know the smallest ones. You just get the tubs as you go, and then as they get bigger, you just upgrade them into bigger tubs. So that's one of the reasons I like this rack a lot is because it lasts you like you get it goes a lot farther. So you're not having to drop money on new racks every two years and then have a room full of racks that may be emptier that you're not using because you don't have anything that goes in them. Like these, you just swap out the tubs over time and it makes life a lot easier. And with these, actually what you don't see is actually, I just put some in here, I'll show you. With black box, whenever you get, if you get more than one rack and you wanna stack them, they also include these little dowels. 
that go in your racks and they use them for sturdying it for you know keeping your racks sturdy they're not just free floating on top of each other with the stacks. This is the XA3 Bio 24. Um, so this is one of their bio setups. Essentially what makes this a bio is they have, this is a much deeper uh, front lip um, for their bio enclosures. That way you can give a nice deep substrate layer. Um, but this is a three by two by two model. This cage in particular is equipped with a basking light as well as UVB both on right now they'll each be on for a few hours a day um, this currently houses a hernando county yellow rat snake um, eventually i want all my adult rat snakes into setups like this and this is kind of temporary i want this to be much more naturalistic that's why i got the uvb in the basking area um, but i kind of you know put this stuff in here just to get it going and get him in here because um, he needed more space um, so this is a basking shelf and just you know some simple stuff in here but, so the way these have them set up is there's one, two, three, four, five tabs that just turn real simple. And I have the swing door option. You can also get sliding doors uh, for your cage if you would like. Two sides to it. Get my little tag there. Open her on up. This is an absolutely great cage. I love the UVB. Um, even just yesterday, his first day in it, um, I put him in here and he just was sitting right under that UVB light, um, just soaking it up. So far, he screws it a lot, but he seems to really enjoy it. Eventually, again, this isn't going to have aspen in it. It's going to be more mulch and bark based and a lot more steaks. I'm going to get a pothos going in here. Um, so, it's going to be a lot more aesthetically pleasing in the coming months. But I absolutely love this cage. It's, I mean, it seals perfectly. These doors, it is, there's nothing getting out of these doors when they're locked. Tabs make it nice and easy to open. They're not bulky, nothing sticks out, no squeak to your door hinge, very, very just smooth. Everything is just fantastic. And all this stuff that is here was included. I actually forgot I have a cage for that UVB light and I need to install that before he gets in there. Black Box included all of this except the heat light or the heat bulb. I had to buy the heat bulb uh, separately, but that's a 25 watt, I believe a towel raise halogen bulb. Um, it's just something that doesn't get too warm in here, but just enough. Besides this basking area, Black Box included this cage. They included the UVB fixture along with the bulb. And I, again, I also have a cage for that. It needs to be installed today. It's plug and play, ready to rock and roll. Um, they're all hooked up. If you look up here, so all the wires, so these are still stackable. All these wires are recessed into the top of the cage. So it still stays flat along with the UVB and the basking bulb. So you can still stack all of your cages, even with having lights and wires. And, yep, your dowels are going there, just like with before. All these are pre-drilled, everything to put on your cages for your lights to protect them from the animals. Cause you always want cages around your lights, whether it's carpets or rat snakes or whatever, if it's semi-arboreal. Except LEDs. Yes. Because like when Black Box does LEDs, they're up like they're they're triangle shaped, so they they fit in the corner along the along the back of the cage there. Yeah. But if you have actual fixtures, you always want a cage if you're ha housing a semi-arboreal species because they will wrap around them, and that can be catastrophic. I actually need to get a tow kick for this as well, but not as big of a deal, being that it's just lights and mm -hmm. you know sitting on there, so it's not as needed, but. Still, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Man, I absolutely, I absolutely love the setup. The UVB just brings out his colors, and you know, I can already tell he loves it. And again, my classic wire perches. They're not as pretty in these uh, bigger cages, but they work very well. Food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what he's waiting on. He must be bad you know yesterday. That? Black Box XA3 Bio 24. This is gonna be. This is pretty much gonna be my standard for adult colubrids moving forward. Um, obviously, it's not all gonna happen at once. I do keep, you know, other stuff in the 110 quarts and V70s, which is fine, but ultimately, I want all my adult rat snakes in these XA3 Bio 24s. I think it's a great size. It's even, you could even go with a four-footer version, because they do have one. Black Box has 
so many different options for cages. They have a four by two by two. That's also a bio enclosure with this nice big deep lit, um, lip at the bottom. But they have tons of options, upwards of six foot. I believe their biggest is six by three by three. You have to look at their website. That's, yeah, that's before you get into like the gigantic. Yeah, like the, the huge, like a big stand up one right. that, that you can get. But as right. far as like traditional yeah. caging, it's a six, six by, foot is the longest yeah. that, they, that they have. Tons of different options, guys. There's, they've got three by 18 by 18s, three by two by 18s. Um, 18 cubes, 24 18 cubes. 18 by 18 by 24s, the Bio Gs, which is a fantastic enclosure that I want to incorporate into these with smaller grow out colubrids. Um, eventually, but I mean the options are endless with black box guys. I mean you can have all types of enclosures. I mean even down to these these little nanos. XA12. This is the XA12. I mean this is perfect for all types of very small stuff, man. You want to display a little hatchling rat snake? You can do it in here. You yeah, those are mostly like so they we designed those mostly for tarantulas. Right. Um, but obviously like tarantulas, crusty geckos, smaller small, stuff, morning small, like yeah, small they're designed geckos, for small micro snakes. species and tarantulas mostly so. yeah but anything hey i i, I want to set these up just to display small stuff temporarily yeah. you know what yeah, i mean even like little water snakes a, yeah just to set up a cool enclosure oh, this guy's just coming out to see me he just wants food so the way i've got these set up a thermostat so these two are actually for the cage i'm going to be getting these on timer so i don't have to turn them on and off manually um, but I have this big power strip that's mounted with a screw. This should go into a stud. I did my best to get into one. I did this by hand, did not work very well. So it's in there with a screw, but I also have command strips on just for extra support. And then I have these Inkbird thermostats all set up back here. This one that isn't on is for the XR16 that is not currently running. This is for the XR20. This is the three stack V70, and this is for the six stack V70. All these are set up here individually. You know, it's easy. I've made enough room to get back here and actually, you know, work these if I need to. Um, this makes it super easy. I actually love this setup. All the cords are nice and neat. Nothing's all over the floor. It makes it all super easy. Absolutely love this thermostat setup. And these Inkbird thermostats work great. They're a good alternative just for something affordable to get on a rack, but they're actually very good quality. I haven't had any problems with these things. I do prefer the VE, the VE uh, thermostats, but these get the job done just perfectly and they work great along with these black box racks. Thank y'all for watching this review of all of my black box equipment. Again, I've said it time and time again, I cannot say enough about this company from the customer service to the whole process of buying and choosing your rack and just the products they offer. They are top notch the best of the best in the hobby right now. Cannot say enough about their products. Obviously, I have a ton of equipment from them and I love every single bit of it. Yeah, thank you for watching this video. Please check out blackboxcages.com um, and go pick you out a cage or a rack and uh, check me out on Instagram at Longleaf Reptilia. Check out the podcast, the Herpeticulture Podcast. Check out the man behind the camera, Palmetto Coast Exotics, Justin Smith. And uh, yeah, thank y'all for watching.